Good morning, everyone. Morning. Wonderful to see all of you this morning. Thanks for being here. I have several announcements that I'd like to share with you, beginning with the not-so-great news and getting to the better news. Uh, the not-so-great news is that, uh, long story short, construction on the bell tower at First Lutheran Church has hit some snags. Uh, we had hoped to re-enter the building on January 8th. Unfortunately, that is not going to be the case. It's going to look more like mid to late February now. Uh, so I know this is disappointing, disappointing news. I'm disappointed, um, but we are so close, so close. In the grand scheme of things, we are so close to getting back into the building. So I uh, just want to encourage you there. Secondly, and getting better in the, in the news, we have secured a space for our worship services in the meantime, in the interim. Beginning Sunday, January 8th, we will gather for worship at Venice on Vine, which is the restaurant, which isn't exactly functioning as a restaurant very much right now, but it is a restaurant, and it's going to be a different space than, of course, both of our congregations are used to, rather than the historic and uh, big buildings that we have been worshiping for many years. We're going to be in a storefront where we're going to be worshiping a lot more closer together. And we're going to be able to see the streets, and the streets are going to be seeing us. So it's a much different way of being church. I think it's going to be fun. Um, I think it's going to be um, invigorating and enlivening. So please come and join us and be a part of that. Beginning January 8th. Um, we are going to have worship at 10 a.m. 10 a.m. at Venice on Vine, January 8th and going forward. So I hope to see you there. Come and be a part of it. More details to come. We're still figuring all the details on that. Continuing to get better. Next Sunday, December 18th, we will have a young person worship service led by young people in our congregations. So the young people, meaning the children and the teenagers, will be leading the various parts of our liturgy. And also, in addition to that, we will have an all-age nativity. An all-age nativity. This is not just for kids, it's for all ages. And what this means, it's a fun telling of the story of Jesus, his birth, that gets just about everyone involved. So it's going to be a different kind of worship service. It's going to be fun. We're going to be kind of loose and just kind of going with the flow. So come to worship next week with the expectation that you will have maybe a little part in telling the story of Jesus' birth. Even if you're so comfortable in your pew, we might ask you to stand up and, and move around a little bit. It's going to be memorable. It's going to be fun. Come and be a part of it. And then finally... Uh, the leadership team, the staff, and the congregation of First Lutheran Church would like to say thank you to the Philippus congregation for hosting us, for welcoming us, for being partners with us in this journey. And we want to say also a special welcome to Pastor Sam for your partnership and for welcoming us into this sacred space so that we can worship together this year. Um, and again, I want to extend that invitation to uh, the Philippus congregation to please come and join us, worship with us, come January, be a part of our congregation. We'd love to have you. And we also just want to share a small token with Pastor Sam um, as a gift to him from the leadership team and the congregation on your retirement and also as a thank you, as a token of thank you for your hospitality and partnership. So thank you very much.
come, let us be about our preparations, for a new advent of love is among us. The wastelands of life around us have not shut out the promise of life-giving water. Hatred and warfare, injustice and suffering are not the last word, for they are not of God. We hear again the promise of peace coming in the one who lives shalom among all people. We see again the light God promises in the midst of our darkness. We are feeling again the joy that comes through partnership in the gospel. May our worship recall us to what is centered in life, to the one who gives us breath and purpose in life. We come to embrace the new advent, to be renewed in faith, hope, and love. Our invocation prayer. Lord, we prepare for your advent. As we look forward to the future, we have fears and concerns. We have therefore prayed for deliverance, for healing in our pain, for help with our hurt, for peace and justice for the world. Help us to welcome you at your advent by following you into the future. Embolden us to go forward, confident that you walk with us into tomorrow. When you come among us in your glorious nativity, Give us the grace to see you as the embodiment of sure and certain hope. Help us to discern your active presence with us as you come among us so that in seeing your good work and marveling at your miraculous presence, we might come to a confident faith in the future that even though we don't know what the future may hold, we know that you hold the future. Amen.
Today on this third Sunday of Advent, we uh, continue our story of being grateful, and especially for this week, it's grateful for the joy that this church family has brought to my life. At age 18, I showed up in Cincinnati. I didn't know anybody, freshman at UC, and I started coming here the first week, and this place adopted me. Uh, my church mom was Bobby Gutzweiler and ended up joining the youth group at that time. Later, I led the youth group, and that was a lot of fun. Also taught Sunday school. Nah, that was a little less fun, but <laughs> I still did it. Later, I got married here. And then I baptized my kids, got them confirmed. It's been a long 40 years, and it's been a wonderful, joyful 40 years. So with that, joy, and I'll light the candle. Thank you, Dave. Our scripture this morning is actually from Matthew. Hopefully I have this right. Matthew 11, verses 2 through 11. <clears throat> when John heard in prison that the Messiah, what the Messiah was doing, <clears throat> excuse me, he sent word by his disciples and said to him, are you the one who is to come, or are we to wait for another? Jesus answered them, Go and tell John what you hear and see. The blind receive their sight, the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, and the deaf hear, the dead are raised, and the poor have good news brought to them. And blessed is anyone who takes no offense at me. As they went away, Jesus began to speak to the crowds about John. What did you go out into the wilderness to look at? A reed shaken by the wind? What then did you go out to see? Someone dressed in soft robes? Look, those who wear soft robes are in royal palaces. What then did you go out to see? A prophet? Yes, I tell you, and more than a prophet. This is the one about whom is written. See, I am sending my messenger ahead of you who will prepare your way before you. Truly, I tell you, among those born of women, no one has arisen greater than John the Baptist. Yet the least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. More makeup, you can never have too much. 
Are you hoping for anything else? A hot tub. <laughs> wow. I hope Santa is good to you. <laughs> Anything else? A makeup in a hot tub. <laughs> well, those are two nice gifts. We will keep our fingers crossed. <laughs> well, you will let us know, won't you? Christmas is a time that we give gifts, and we also give gifts. Will you be given any gifts? Who will you be giving a gift to? Your sister. Well, we won't ask you to, to, to name that gift. We wouldn't want to give away. Does your family have, or, or let me ask you, uh, let me ask another. We give gifts to one another, but sometimes we give gifts to strangers. Do you guys do anything like that? You're going to adopt a family. That is a very good thing to do. Is that like the angel tree? You're doing that through Bethany House, a, a very nice ministry. That's what we do on Christmas. We exchange gifts with families and with friends, but we also go one step more, don't we? We do something for people we don't know. Do any of you guys have any tradition of gifts for people who you don't know, like the, the angel tree, or do you drop some money in the Salvation Army, or anything like that? Heifer? So you give animals, you give livestock. A prison ministry for uh, children whose parents are incarcerated. That's actually a very good ministry because they give the they give the gifts to the person incarcerated, and they can give it directly to their children on visitation day. Are there other things we do? The free store food bank. Well, those are great things. That's what we do on Christmas when we are part of God's family. We give gifts to people other than who we know. That's a great thing to do. Let us pray. Gracious Lord, we thank you every Sunday that there are children here. As long as there's children here, we know we're, we will have a future and we will continue. We are grateful, Lord, for the privilege of being able to exchange gifts. We know that's not a privilege everyone has. And Lord, we're also grateful you laid it on our hearts to go beyond family and friends and to give to those who have less than we do. We pray that in your name. Amen. Amen. Now, my understanding, next week, you guys are in charge of worship. I'm going to be out of town, too, and I'm going to be sad to miss it. Well, let me know about that hot tub. <laughs> I think that's a new one on Mom and Dad. <laughs> Let us pray. Gracious Lord, may the words of my mouth and may the meditation upon our heart be acceptable to you this day. It's in your Son's name we pray. Amen. Our traditional text for the third Sunday of Advent is usually John the Baptist. He's a strange person. He lives out in the wilderness. He eats locusts and wild honey, wears uncomfortable clothes, and shouts at people. He challenges both Rome, and he challenges the very people in his own religious system. And today, those two things have gotten him thrown into prison. Sometimes when you choose to speak truth, you will pay a price. So today we have a more subdued John, 
I think prison has a way of doing that to you. And he sends word, he sends word to Jesus. Are you the long-awaited Messiah, Jesus? Or do we continue to wait? Notice, Jesus neither gives a yes or a no. His response is, tell John to look around. What does he see? The blind are given sight. Those were leprosy or healed. Even dead people are brought back to the grave. The poor are hear, hearing the good news. Really? That's what's happening? That's what they see? I don't know. John's in prison. He's about to lose his life. Jesus has healed some people, but there's still a lot who are sick. There's still a lot who are poor. And those who are dying are staying in the grave. See, Jesus is not answering the question, are you the Messiah? He doesn't say, of course I'm Messiah, look at all these great things I'm doing. Because the paradox is, anyone who claims to be the Messiah is not the Messiah. And anyone who claims to be the, the Messiah by pointing to themselves of all the great things they're doing, that disqualifies them from being the Messiah. No, Jesus is responding with Scripture. Isaiah chapter 29. In that day, the, the deaf will hear the words, the words of the scroll, and out of the gloom and darkness, the eyes of the blind will see. Once more, the humble will rejoice in the Lord, and the needy will rejoice in the Holy One of Israel. Jesus is saying, don't ask me if I'm the Messiah. That's not for me to answer. No, that's for you to discern through Scripture. That's for you to discern through Scripture. And the Scripture that Jesus chooses is eschatological in nature. We talked about that a few weeks ago. In the Messianic age, when the kingdom of God has arrived, this is what you will see. You will see the end of sickness. You will see the end of poverty. There will be no more violence. Even death will be defeated. It's as, it's as if Jesus is throwing the question back to John. John, is that what you are seeing? In the midst of Roman occupation, unlawfulment, imprisonment of yourself and probably thousands of your countrymen, having the life squeezed out of you by an oppressive and toxic religion, John, can you see more than that? Can you see the kingdom of God breaking through? Do you see the light shining through the darkness and the darkness not overcoming it? Does God's love overcome human hatred? John, what do you see from that prison cell? Tell me. At some point in our faith journey, we are called to make an affirmation that Jesus is Lord. What do we base that on? Do we simply re repeat a creed or a statement of faith? Yeah. That's what we do when things are going great in our lives. But are we as honest as John and asked ourselves that question, Jesus, are you Lord, in that bleak midwinter night? When things are not going so well. When things are going badly. Are we brave enough to say, Jesus, are you Lord? 
And Jesus is not going up is not going to come up next to us and whisper in our ears. Of course I am. No, the answer will come through Scripture. What does Scripture reveal to you about who I am? And Scripture has a way of having us examine our own heart. Can you see the light breaking through the darkness? Can you, where you are now, no matter where you are on your faith journey, can you still hold on to that the day is coming in which the blind will see, justice will defeat evil, death will not win? If you can, it means the kingdom of God has arrived and Jesus is Lord. What we see when we look around us matters. If we see the world through anger, we will have an angry and vengeful Jesus. The world will be a frightening and dangerous place, brother against brother, parent against child. And we will hope for and we will pray for a vengeful Messiah to bring fire and brimstone to our enemies. And we will praise Jesus as Lord as we watch our enemies tossed into that lake of fire. If we see the world through greed, we will see Jesus as the prosperity Messiah, giving us and only us everything we want. And in our wealth and our privilege, we will beat our chest and proclaim, Jesus is Lord. Today we light the candle of joy. As John 3.16 reminds us, God loved us so much that God sent us Jesus. Goodness. What do we see? If we see joyfulness in the midst of the struggles of life, we can joyfully proclaim Jesus as Lord even in that bleak midwinter. Our two congregations have been through so much in the past few years. Our country has been through so much. A pandemic. An attempted overthrow of an election. Gun violence practically every day. In our own lives, we have our own struggles. Many people here are dealing with health issues. People dealing with loss of jobs, family concerns, the high price of everything. But if you are here today, it means that you have searched for and you have found the kingdom of God. You see beyond your present circumstances and you lean into a better future. The darkness did not overcome the light. You heard some bad news today from Pastor Josh. The church is not going to be ready on time. A couple of more months in the wilderness. But did you hear what he said? Not, oh, this is horrible, but hey, this allows us to have a more intimate worship space. Hard to feel much intimacy in a sanctuary made for 800 people when there's 30 of us. He said, people are going to be able to see our light because it's not going to be stained glass blocking. And we will be able to see God's people. See, in the midst of the bleakness that the building is not completed, God's kingdom breaks through. He sees more than that. So the question for us, can we find meaning and purpose in these past few years? 
Can you see that God's hand has been at work the whole time? We have not been abandoned. This has all been part of God's providence. Through everything we have gone through, both in our families and our lives and and with our churches, we have been living out God's providence the whole time. So therefore, can we be grateful for the past couple of years? Was it a gift from God the whole time? Not the pandemic, of course. Not the struggle with the sanctuary, the the steeple, the bell. Not what we're going through here. That's not the gift. The gift was God's grace during those times. And what is grace? Grace is the light shining through the darkness and the darkness not overcoming and the darkness not overcoming it. You are here today because you did not allow the darkness to overcome the light. So we ask this day not fully confident. We don't know what the future holds. And we ask maybe with shaky knees. Jesus, are you Lord? We want an answer. We want a sign. We want some proof. And Jesus responds, I've given you the prophets. I've given you the scriptures. What else do you need? You have eyes to see. You have ears to hear. Look around you. What do you see when you look beyond yourself? The blind can see. The lame can walk. The deaf can hear. The light is breaking through the darkness. I included a picture on the front of the bulletin of Nelson Mandela visiting the prison in which he served 27 years with no crime. I started to include a picture of the prison cell. It's smaller than the space I'm standing in. An unjust system of apartheid. And he didn't deny the evil of that system. Yet he was able to see beyond the system. When he looked at that prison cell, he saw a future in which the oppressor would peacefully give up power. No violence. Plowsh swords would be pounded into plowshares. Enemies would reconcile. The wolf would lay down with the lamb. Restorative justice, not revenge, not retribution, but restorative justice would reign like water. For 27 years, he saw the light break through the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. So Jesus comes to us today and says, What say you? Am I your Lord? We look around in the midst of our struggles and we see joy all around us. And we proclaim, Jesus, you are our Lord. We see good news all around us. The light shines in the darkness, but the darkness shall not overcome it. Then, The kingdom of God has arrived. Let us pray. Gracious God, we come to you this day and there are struggles all around us. First Lutheran continues to struggle with issues with the building. We We continue with the struggle of the painful into our congregation. We go into a world where people are suffering and struggling with violence and oppression and hunger. But we refuse to let that be the end of the story. We would not let the darkness overcome the light. We see more than that. We see your kingdom breaking through. 
in every act of kindness, in every good deed, in every donation to a charity, in every, in every way we just support one another. We proclaim you are Lord. Amen. Let us join together for hymn 104. Now is the time in our service in which we lift up and remember those in need of prayer. Are there prayer requests you'd like to make this day? We'll start over here and work our way towards the back. Shawanda in the back.
Are there other prayer requests this day? Let us pray. Gracious Lord, we come to you this day, those that we have named, those who are dealing with uh, hospitalizations and surgeries. We pray for those people who continue to suffer from just the economic hardship that we're living through with inflation. We pray for those who are lost, both physically and those who are lost spiritually. But Lord, every Sunday, we remind ourselves that we just do not pray as those who have, that have no hope. We pray with full confidence that you are the Lord that answers prayers, and you answer prayers how? Through our hands and feet. Lord, enable us, empower us, and show us that we are to be the answer to your prayers. We pray this as you taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, let be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Our offering plates are in back of the sanctuary. We continue to practice COVID protocols. Uh, make sure you, you mark the envelope, either fill up us or first uh, Lutheran. You can also give any number of electronic ways. Let us join together in our offertory prayer. Redeeming God, you sent us a messenger, John the Baptist, to prepare our hearts, our souls, for the coming Christ. One life and death. And the power bestowed upon me by a minister of the gospel, I use that power to request my favorite Christ, uh, Christmas hymn this Sunday. <laughs> it is, it is, and the words are in the bulletin in the bleak midwinter.
People of joy, let joy live in your heart and share the joy of Christ with all you meet. Share joy by seeing the good in each other. Share joy by remembering good times and hoping for good times to come. Share joy by praying for our world. In this Advent season, we need to see, feel, and share joy. As you go out into the wonder of God's creation, share joy, peace, and hope with those you meet. Amen. <laughs>